William Aruda is a motivational speaker, entrepreneur, author, and the world's leading authority on the topic of personal branding. He has been at the forefront of the field since its inception, teaching everyone from young adults to senior executives how to harness the power of authentic personal branding. William is the creator of 360 Reach, the personal branding survey, which has been used by nearly 2 million professionals, including myself. I found William's company four years ago and became certified by Reach Personal Branding, and it was a life changer for me. He created the Reach Personal Branding Certification Program, which has certified over a 1,000 career and executive coaches in his methodology, again, including me, and I am so grateful. William's true passion is spreading the message of personal branding through motivational speeches and interactive workshops. Over the past two decades, he has delivered 1,500-plus keynotes and workshops in 31 countries. His clients include Adobe, BP, Disney, Garnier, Google, Gucci, IBM, LinkedIn, Microsoft, Morgan Stanley, Target, Warner Brothers, and hundreds of other companies, universities, and associations. He is the best-selling author of the definitive book on personal branding, Career Distinction and Ditch, Dare, Do. His latest book, Digital You, takes his proven strategies to exciting new levels, helping readers translate their real-world brand for the digital world. William regularly shares his thoughts on the future of personal branding in his Forbes column. He holds a master's degree in education. William Aruda is a delightful person, and we had such a wonderful conversation on the podcast. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. So, William Aruda, I am so happy to have you on the PR Maven podcast because you and your company were sort of there when I was figuring out who I was and like coming out of the closet as the PR Maven. So <laughs> I, want, I want to thank you for that. So oh, William, it's, well. <laughs> I, I just want to say, that I, you know what, um, you've always known that you were the PR maven. I think you just needed to, to, to acknowledge it and, and, and express it. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's really the case. That's the whole point of personal branding is, is figuring out who you are and what your superpower is and then telling the world about it. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And, and so many people, unfortunately, don't. Um, do that. And I, and I think that's, that it's unfortunate because there's all this, these people with these amazing gifts out there that are, um, may not be, be sharing it with the world. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you because I found reach personal branding kind of at a, a turning point in my life when I was making some big changes in my life. And I, really dove in head first into all of the certifications that you offered through reach personal branding. And I became certified as a personal branding strategist and a social media strategist and several other strategists. (laughs) And it really really helped me. And and I remember having a phone conversation with you actually, uh, because I think 
I was a little bit of a different, <laughs> I was slightly different from most of your clients at the time because most of your clients were HR people who were using this certification to counsel others as part of their career development. And I was using it more from a PR perspective. So you really validated what I was doing and helped me through the process. Oh, well, it's nice to hear, and I'm absolutely delighted that we were able to connect that way. I am, too. So, uh, I mean, I think that was about four years ago, maybe five years ago that we first connected. So for for the benefit of our listeners, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place in personal branding, and now you're known as the father of personal branding. Yeah. Well, you, you know, uh, you and I actually have a lot more in common than I had with any of the people who went through the certification program because I started my career and, and spent it in branding and communications and marketing. And, and in fact, I loved it. I, I, I thought I was going to work in branding for my whole life. And I was working at IBM and I loved my job and I loved the people I worked with and everything was great. And then in 1997, um, sitting on my assistant's desk was Fast Company Magazine, and the cover story was The Brand Called You by Tom Peters. And in it, he said, in the future, every one of us will need to think of ourselves as brands if we want to be successful and happy at work. And that day, I decided I was going to start the first ever personal branding company. So that's kind of, it's really serendipity. That's how it happened. That is remarkable. Did, t- did you ever meet Tom Peters so you could tell him that? No, you know what? I did have a chat with him. Um, and you know what? I had, I'll tell you, I had a chat with him because uh, about, I don't know, maybe 10 years after that first Brand Called You article came out, Fast Company wrote a story saying, uh, and the story was about all the things that they predicted that didn't happen. And, and they said personal branding that Tom Peters predicted didn't happen. And I, I was devastated by that because I thought, oh, my God, it's just burgeoning. It's really starting to happen now. And so I had a chat with him, and he was really distressed by it. And then uh, that was right before LinkedIn launched. And then LinkedIn launched, and pretty much everyone realized that they needed to have some kind of brand um, in the career world. And, of course, then, then Fast Company took back their taking back of the, the brand called You thing. So, uh, so yeah, I, I did get to have a nice chat with him, but uh, around a topic we were both a little distressed about. That's very funny. I never knew that whole that whole story about how Fast Company put the story out and sort of retracted, and then they, <laughs> it is a thing. Yeah. yeah, I guess it really is a thing after all. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yes, much much to 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 uh, my satisfaction. Well, all of my uh, learnings and studying of personal branding have resulted in me starting this podcast, which I've had now well over a year. And the whole premise of the podcast is that you really need to connect both online and in person. And, you know, if you meet somebody online, you should endeavor to meet them in person. And if you meet somebody in person, you need to extend the relationship by connecting online. So you obviously have espoused that whole idea for your whole career and uh, so how do you advise people to uh, connect with others I mean obviously LinkedIn is a great way but what are the other ways that you encourage people to connect yeah you know um, I I think people need to look at the intersection of two things when they're looking to build their their virtual brand Uh, and one is how do you like to communicate Right. How do you do you like to write? Do you like to write long things? Do you write, like to write short things? Do you like to speak? Do you do you enjoy video? Um, do you like you? You enjoy podcasts and you're, you're really you're you're the, a real human interactor. Right. So these these are tools that are perfect for you. So I think you need to look at what you love to do because you're not going to build your brand online and be visible and create these connections and relationships if you don't love what you do. And the second half of that um, set intersect set is you need to know where your people are. So who are the people that you're looking to connect with and, and influence and be part of a community with? And when you look at the intersection of those two things, then you kind of pick your tools. So, um, so like you, um, I, like to, I like to talk to people. I like to use video. I'm, I'm not, even though I have a Forbes column, I'm actually really not the world's, you know, the, the person who loves to write that much. But 
Um, so, so I try to use those tools and, and then put them in the places where people um, can see them. So I think LinkedIn is a really powerful place because you can use video, you can use words, you can, um, you can invite people from all these different groups uh, to your podcast. So um, yeah, it, it's one place, but there are, there are so many depending on who you are and who your audience is. Well, yeah, I mean, LinkedIn has really, I mean, advanced so much even recently. I, I think it's very good. We were talking in our pre-interview chat about the Google, <laughs> and I feel <laughs> like, I like, like the Google really acknowledges um, what I call Google juice that comes from LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a big authoritative website. So if you have a robust uh, profile on LinkedIn with a lot of, um, endorsements and a lot of engagement, a lot of content. I think that really helps you when someone Googles your name. Yes, I'm glad you say that because it, it, no matter what you're doing and, and what you're doing online, if if you're looking to build your brand for your career to be successful, LinkedIn is a, is a must, at least for your profile. Uh, you need a stellar profile. When, when somebody Googles you, as you just said, your profile is going to show up in one of the top three spots and 62% of all the clicks go to those top spots. So if you want to influence people, it's not like you need to be on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. Just make sure you're at least in LinkedIn and that you've built a stellar profile that is um, credible and likable, right? That it, that it, it really demonstrates what makes you great. And at the same time, there's the human element that really shows people um, that you're someone they'd want to get to know because people do want to work with and connect with people they know, like, and trust. And the like part is key. And a lot of people's LinkedIn profiles are really, they're heavy on the credibility and you know, I've done this and I've done that and I went to this school and, and they don't really make themselves very likable. And, and when you don't have the benefit of being with someone in person, you kind of have to amp up that likability factor. That is so true. I mean, I know so many people who, uh, you know, when you first meet them, they can't wait to tell you that they went to Harvard or they, you know, <laughs> tell you about something about themselves and, and, a lesson I actually learned early in life from my own mother was that people really, you know, want you to acknowledge acknowledge them before you tell them about yourself. So I think it's really important to grow bigger ears and a smaller mouth. <laughs> and, and <laughs> as hard as that is for me, because I love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, William, uh, how do you measure success in your PR, social media, and marketing? Uh, what a great question. And, and a lot of people forget the metrics. They forget the measurement, right? And they do all this stuff, and they have no idea if it's delivering value for them, right? So I say before you start any kind of social media campaign for your brand, you need to ask yourself what it is you want to achieve. Right? Are you looking to grow your network with a certain type of people? Are you looking to build your influence uh, with a certain community? Are you looking to demonstrate thought leadership and become known as an expert in an area of expertise or something that you're really passionate about? So what are your objectives? And if you know what it is you're trying to do, um, then you, you can actually go back and take a look. So uh, if you're looking to grow your network, you can say, how many, how many um, people have joined my network? How many, how many followers do I have now in Twitter? How many uh, friends do I have in Facebook, if that's what you use, right? You can measure things like that. If you're looking to, to build your thought leadership, right, and you're putting your content out there, uh, the question is, you know, are people coming to you now? Um, to get your, your advice? Are, are you getting opportunities to speak? Are you getting opportunities to be on TV or to be quoted in a publication? Are people referencing your work in the work that they're producing? So, so really, it's knowing those objectives up front and then being able to understand the baseline. Where am I now, right? How many followers do I have? Or what's my profile in my area of expertise? Whatever it is. And then a, a period of time later, you want to go back and see what kind of delta you've created yeah that's a very good recommendation as a matter of fact we've created um, at marshall communications we have a measurement dashboard 
where uh, we clients can decide what metrics they want to measure. And then it's kind of like the dashboard of your car. You can see, you know, the speedometer, which might be, you know, how many Facebook followers you have or friends that you have. And then you you have the odometer, which might be, you know, how many downloads of your podcast you've had and other measures of success that you want to track. So um, I definitely feel like, uh, you know, keeping track of those, those numbers and, Obviously, engagement is really important, too, because um, you don't want to be just putting content out and nobody trying to, like, share it or comment. On it. <laughs> so, yeah, think, uh, engagement is an important measure. Yeah. I, you know, I want to acknowledge you for, for what you're doing with, with Marsh and Pura, um, because we have somebody in common who hired you. Uh, this is how big you've become, is people are telling me, uh, about all these people that I know about, and I and I heard nothing but glowing. Um, and this is uh, I, I don't guess I don't want to mention your clients um, out loud, but but uh, this is a person from Washington D.C. and um, but who who is just wowed by the kind of work that you're doing. So so bravo, you really are um, doing kind of cool, interesting, innovative, uh, impactful things. So um, wow, that's not out. really. That gives me the chills. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> you're so big. See, your brand is so big. People are talking to me about you. And, um, we hadn't chatted in, in, in years. Yeah. Well, I did hire, under your recommendation, the amazing Deb Dib at one point. And she helped me with my LinkedIn profile. And uh, I spent a lot of time with her. Uh, working on what I call my personal brand manifesto. So uh, uh-huh. I really love that woman, Deb Dib. A big shout out to her. I hope she's listening to the podcast because uh, uh, she, she's a really great writer, isn't she? She, You, you and I are going to have to fight over who's going to be the president of her fan club because um, I I adore her as well. And And you know what her brand is about? And this is what I love about personal branding. You know, she did a lot of discovery, and she determined her brand is is to go from good to great. She she she's not the person who's gonna, you know, help help you figure all that stuff out. But when you get a bio that you think is good but not amazing, or you have you're working on some kind of, uh, you know, manifesto or whatever you're working on, she she's the person who can really you know understand you and help make it from good to great, and that's. I, I think it's a really interesting brand, and she's helped so many people by by doing that. That extra, it would take me eight million hours to get to where she can go from good to great in in a few. Well, yes. However, I must say that she did spend a lot of time on the phone. I think we had eight or ten hour, one hour long phone calls. So. She doesn't just scrape the surface, and I think that's one of the things that I really appreciated about working with her is that she goes deep. I mean, with me, she dug into my ancestry, and we ended up incorporating a story about my great-grandfather in Germany who was the station master, the train station master in Illingen, which is near Stuttgart in Germany. And I mean, it took it took several hours of conversing back and forth to like get to that one nugget that she yeah. compared she compared me to a train station master you know seeing all the trains <laughs> coming and going plus also we realized that with me if you get on the train with me that's great but don't stand in my way because the train's going to keep on going <laughs> and it will run you over <laughs> if you don't get out of the way I, you know what, that, and that's her gift, by the way. And, and I, by the way, I wasn't implying that, that she just does kind of surface stuff. She definitely digs deep, but she finds those, right? You could tell her a thousand things and she will find the thing that really helps you convey your brand in a way that nothing else would. And I, that, and I got to tell you, she hit the nail on the head with that. And that is, is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I'm going to have to call her later today and thank her for that. It makes me laugh out loud just to think about it because it is so true. It's like a oh. freight train coming down the track. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, William, what is the biggest change you have seen in the world of personal branding since 1997 uh, when you saw that article by Tom Peters? Here's the thing. When, when personal branding started, everything was real world, right? And until LinkedIn even jumped on the scene in 2003, um, no one even considered building their brand online. And even after they did, LinkedIn for many years, for at least five or six years, was just your online resume and, you know, e-networking site. But the, social media has just exploded the, the, the whole digital branding piece. And, and the biggest change is uh, what I call the translation process. It, it's translating your real world brand to the virtual world. And what's happened now is virtual precedes real. More people meet you online before they ever meet you in person. And, and that means that your online brand needs to be 100% authentic and aligned with who you are in the real world. And that's a much harder thing to do, right? It's easy to do in the flesh and bones, hard to do in bits and bytes. And, and I think that the people who get it right are the people who don't build their brand separately online, but actually just take, they first they figure out their real world brand and they, they engage in that translation process from um, who they are in the real world to how do you, how do you demonstrate that in the virtual world, knowing that we don't have the benefit of having a real live human being in front of us. That is such good wisdom, William, because I think people um, somehow think that they don't want to go online because they're not ready or, you know, they've got to, get themselves um, either like gussied up at the beauty parlor <laughs> or, you know, they need to learn more. They need to be more of an expert. But what I have learned through this whole process is you just need to put yourself out there and again, make connections and those, those authentic connections that grows your network and the larger that your, your network is, the larger your brand is going to be. So, um, I, I I agree that you know you can't hold back because you I I mean so many people have the imposter syndrome and they're afraid to put themselves out there because they think they need to get more of something. Y yeah, uh, you, you know what? I, I, um, every brand. This is something that Tom Peter said. Every brand is worthy of remark, and. I, I think it's such a powerful statement because every – so you, you, you and I are the same in this way. We're people collectors, right? We, we, we meet people and, we'll, and we find them fascinating and we, we, you know, forever want to stay connected whether it's actual, actually possible or not. And, and I think that that's the thing is every, every single person has this unique ingredient to offer the world. And when they're willing to do that and just put it out there, they're going to be happier and the world's going to benefit from that. And, and that's why in, in personal, as you know, in, in your field, right, it, it's all about, you know, understanding that it, it, you don't have to be, you know, the most amazing person in the world with 8,852 accomplishments and a magna cum laude degree from Harvard or any of that kind of stuff. What you really just need to be is you and, and figure out your brand differentiation, that thing, that thing that makes you unique and compelling and interesting and attractive and magnetic. And you just need to be that, right? And, and that means you need to do it right away online so that you can start to attract people uh, the same way you would in the real world because everything has moved online. I just love that. And it reminds me of a song that I learned in summer camp, which was um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't Hide Your Light Under a Bush. I won't sing it because I'm not, <laughs> I'm allowed. Oh, I, I think you should. I think you should sing it. <laughs> it's about I'm going to let my light shine. You know, don't don't hide your light under a bushel. Let your light shine. And uh, it was like this little camper light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> camper light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. <laughs>
I hope that I'm the first person on your podcast that you have serenaded with your with your campfire song. <laughs> I think you probably are, William, and you, you inspired me to just be myself, <laughs> for better or for worse, <laughs> for richer or for poorer. <laughs> oh, boy, William, this is so much fun. All right, I have one more question before we go to break, and that is, why does every career-minded professional need to build their brand online? Hmm. Good. Well, I, and, um, so this could take about seven hours, but since we're going to go to break soon, I'll, I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll keep it short. But uh, th- this is what everyone needs to know is we live in a world that's competitive. It, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're a company, right, Starbucks has Pete's and Dunkin' Donuts and all other, com- you know, competitors. And we all have competitors, too. There are other people who do what you do. And if you want to stand out, if you want to be able to achieve your goals, you need to make sure that people can recognize what you uniquely offer. If you don't seem to offer something different from everyone else who shares your job title, then no one's going to get excited about you. You're pretty much replaceable by anyone else who shares that job title. But when you offer something that's uniquely available from you, you put yourself in a category of one. And, and this is so critical online because of just what we were talking about before, this concept of digital first, where people are meeting you first online. And if that first impression online is lackluster, then that's it. Because of a, a, a cognitive bias we have called primacy, uh, which means we believe the first thing we learn, if somebody meets you online and you have a lackluster profile that really doesn't explain your differentiation, then I'm not going to get too excited about you. And that's who I'm going to believe you are forever. So this is why it's really important to instantly capture people online. And if you're working inside a company, one of the things we know, even companies with robust intranets, if people want to learn about the new person in the cubicle down the hall, they're going to use Google to learn about that person. They're not going to go up and, and you know, knock on their cubicle divider and, and talk to them. They're actually going to Google them, even people working inside companies. So if you want to make a great first impression and if you want to expand your brand beyond the number of people uh, who are physically connected to you in a room or a space or an office, then you need to, you need to focus on digital branding. I agree so much. I mean, just think of how the world has changed because, I mean, back in the day before the commercial Internet, if we got a phone call from somebody and they said, oh, you know, hi, my name is Joe Jones, you know, it's like <laughs> they had to explain who they were. But now, like, we're accepting that phone call and we're Googling them simultaneously and trying to figure out who is this person. And also, if you have a common name like Joe Jones, you know, there's going to be a lot of different Joe Joneses that show up. So another reason to do this is to make sure you're the one, the correct version of your name who shows up on Google, too. So, um, yeah, I think it's really important to be findable and to stand out for the unique version of yourself that you, you are and what what you have to offer, too. And again, all of this is stuff that I have learned from studying William Aruda's personal branding lessons. So thank you, William. So oh, we're going to thank you. You, you're too kind. You, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to continue our conversation with William Aruda shortly. But I want to share with you that we have created the PR Maven Nation listener line, and you can call in at two zero seven six. Two zero nine zero seven five, and record a message for me that we will play on the podcast and you can ask me questions or share feedback or ideas for the podcast and uh, we'll play it on a future podcast and respond to your questions and you can ask me just about anything <laughs> almost <laughs> anything <laughs> So also, um, we're going to now give away a copy of my book, PR Works, and one of our famous things to do today pads for those of you who are like me and love to write things down and check them off. So to get a copy of my book and a copy of the pad, go to prmaven.com slash giveaway, and you could be our next winner. And we'll be right, right back in a moment with more from William Aruda. This 
This podcast is all about growing your network in order to strengthen your brand. In my 30 plus year marketing and PR career, I have seen many organizations waste their precious time and money on marketing because they're trying to obtain success without any strategy to achieve their goals. So many organizations and companies suffer from what I call the shiny object syndrome, trying every new fad that comes down the pike. That's why I created the Marshall Plan 15 years ago. We have done over 100 of these plans for clients, helping them to get out of their day-to-day routine to identify their goals, solidify their brand story, focus in on their ideal customer avatar, analyze their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and create a realistic budget and measurement dashboard. We create the Marshall Plan collaboratively with our clients over the course of three months. We have a 65-step process to create a highly customized, actionable plan. And it's not like we come in and say, we are the consultants from away and we know everything. Instead, we come in and say, let's sit down at the table with your leadership team and we'll bring our expertise in what's working in PR and marketing. And our client team brings their knowledge of what's working in their organization. And together, we come up with a really amazing plan. For many, it's been a transformative process. I have watched how teams have come together and their faces light up because they have such a sense of accomplishment and they're so excited about the future of their organization. We help our client figure out the best way to implement the plan, sometimes using people within their organization and sometimes with our help. We would love to chat with you about how you can expand your network and achieve your marketing goals with a Marshall Plan. Go to marshallpr.com slash Marshall Plan to learn more about the process, or better yet, send me an email at nancy at prmaven.com, and we'll set up a time to talk and get started. And now back to our conversation. Welcome back. And today we're talking with William Aruda, personal branding guru and somebody who I have followed for many years and and he has really impacted my life both personally and professionally. So I'm so happy to have him on the PR Maven podcast. And and we have so much energy emanating from this conversation. I hope that everybody who's listening is feeling it because, um, well, both of us, you know, he said we're both people connectors. And I think um, we have a strong connection with each other, too. So, William, welcome back. And it's great to have you here today. I, you know what? I'm just wondering why it took you so long to invite me onto your podcast. <laughs> because this is the most fun I've had in in weeks. <laughs> I think that I've always held you up on such a pedestal. I was like, oh, I don't know if I really couldn't, you know. Again, it's that imposter syndrome. It's like, am I ready for William Aruda? Because... Oh. <laughs> so I feel like I've been practicing to get ready to have this conversation with you. Well, something tells me I, I, you are just a, an absolute natural at at being able to connect with people in this medium. And, and, and you, as you know, audio is much harder than than anything else. So, um, yeah, you, you, you found one of your incredible tools for connecting with people. So bravo. <laughs> well, who would have thought that, you know, all the talking that I've done, you know, starting in kindergarten when I used to get sent out in the hallway, <laughs> to start talking in class, <laughs> and then I spent hours and hours on the telephone with my girlfriends when I was a teenager, and I used to get in trouble because I would be in my in my bedroom at home. And that was when like you just had one phone for everybody in the household. So my father would pick up the phone and he could tell that I was talking to be like, Nancy, time to go to bed. <laughs> so now finally I, I can talk and I, <laughs> you know, it's it, okay. It, yeah. Nobody's going to yell at me or send me in the hall. <laughs> yeah. It's your gift. I guess people could just unsubscribe, but God forbid, let's hope they don't do that. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, William, how are companies using personal branding with their talent? Ah, I'm so, so glad you bring that up. And, and this is the, you know, when I started in personal branding, I would go to companies and say, hey, because um, I, I only knew the corporate world. I, I didn't work with individuals back then. I, I, that, that was my thing. And I'd go in and say, hey, I want to brand your people. Um, you know, let's do some personal branding programs. And, and they would say, we don't want 10,000 individual brands out in the marketplace. We need everyone delivering our corporate brand. Or we don't want to, you know, we help them build their brand. It's going to make them really successful, and then they're going to want to leave. And that has completely, it was really a, a tough thing to fight against for many years. And it has completely evolved. And companies realize now that their secret weapon is, is unleashing their people's individual personal brands. When they give their people permission, not, not permission, the mandate to deliver their brand promise every day at work, Everything, everything gets better. Everyone starts operating at a higher level. Uh, they start in, uh, delivering their individual contribution, right? Diversity down to the level of an individual where, uh, you know, innovation comes from creativity, which comes from individuals being themselves. And so, so companies have recognized that. And I will say um, a lot of programs I build in companies are either with high potential uh, folks, with women, because I think one of the challenges for women has been is the corporate world um, has pretty much made us believe that to get to the corner office, you have to, you have to act like the old white guy. Nothing, nothing against, oh, I'm an old white guy. Nothing against old white guys. But, but, but that's been the, the model. Like if the only people who are up there are these people who behave this way, then rather than be myself, I have to behave like them. And so a lot of organizations are realizing to get women into more senior roles where they actually can contribute the unique value and, and um, is, is to give them permission to unearth their brand and, and to use it inside the organization. So, um, so that's it. And then the third thing I will tell you about uh, personal branding inside companies, which is really, it's really fascinating. And it's a study that was done by a woman named Francesca Gino and two colleagues of hers whose names I'm forgetting, but she, she's a Harvard professor, and they studied onboarding programs inside companies. And what they determined is that the companies that focus their onboarding programs on the personal brands of the people they're bringing into the organization have higher engagement and retention than the companies that focus on the brand of the company. And, and what they're doing by helping these people unearth their brands is giving them um, uh, a, a pretty strong message that, that your unique value is welcome here. And what we want you to do is figure out how you contribute uh, to the organization rather than tell you this is how we do things and this is what our brand is about. So, so it's really powerful. So it's being used pretty much throughout organizations now, at least, at least forward-thinking organizations that really do believe that their talent is their greatest asset. Oh, I can so see how that would help with uh, hiring and retention, actually, because if a person feels like they are acknowledged by their company as an individual and for their unique contributions, I think they're a lot more likely to stay for the long term. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think the, the thing that, um, that, that it warms my heart around that is that um, there's so much inertia that says that, that, you know, that onboarding is about, you know, telling people this is how we do this and this is what our brand is about and this is what our values are. And, and I think it's pretty hard for an organization to t kind of throw that up in the air and say, okay, you know, let's not make it about us. Let's make it about you, uh, the new hire. And that's pretty, that's pretty forward thinking, right, and pretty innovative. And if you think about where the world of personal branding has come from people being afraid of it to now people using it instead of training on the corporate brand to get people to, to truly connect and engage. That, that for me is, is um, I feel like personal branding has, has made it. And I, I've done my job. I've made my mark. Oh, I think it makes so much sense. And one thing that I have advocated for is companies to create videos about each of their people and put those on their website so that if a prospective employee is considering going to work for a company, if they can watch, especially millennials, if they can see 
uh, the, the, see the people they would be working with and see videos of them, get a sense of them, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I would fit in with that person or I'd fit in with that person. So I think that allowing uh, employees to create videos of themselves that show not only how they are at work, but maybe show what they do um, on their free time too. Like, oh, yeah, I like to go hiking or I like to go mountain climbing or swimming or whatever, um, then others can tell, oh, yeah, I would fit in with that group, and I'd like to meet that person and work with that person. Uh, I, I am so, so you said two really important things that I love. The first is video, and, and that is really and, – and by the way, the, uh, you know, COVID is, is changing uh, video forever. People who are uncomfortable being on video, everyone is on Zoom uh, right now, and, and video is the only tool. If we're gonna, if everything's moving online before um, we have real world connection, the only way online to deliver, you know, a true communication to be able to connect with people on a deeper, more emotional level is with video. So I, and I'm, I'm not surprised that you're encouraging your clients to, to, you know, get videos of their people to be able to create that emotional connection, um, and that's what it's about, right? Everything. In, in life is about this emotional connection. We make every buying decision in life based on emotion. We, we pretend it's based on logic and we give you all the logical reasons that we made the decision. But, but logic aside, right, once you've ticked the box next to all of the logical requirements for something, the actual thing that tips the scales in favor of, of any decision we're making is the emotional component. So your clients having those videos online helps people create that emotional connection with the people in the organization without even having met them. So um, I think that's a brilliant idea. Well, I'm glad that you think that's a great idea. And I want to, I want to say there's, um, there's been a meme out there on the internet regarding COVID that actually zoom has become very popular and, and they should have named the actual virus Zoom because it has zoomed into so many countries and cities. <laughs> and they should have named the video thing COVID. <laughs> like, which, uh, <laughs> of course, of see course. See what I mean? Wow, I, like we should call Zoom COVID because it's like c- companies that are doing video. <laughs> and they should have I, named I the virus Zoom. <laughs> that, that is absolute brilliance. Um, I, who, whoever came out, I'm always amazed at the creativity that comes out of challenging times. I think so too. And, and we're able to share on social media. And I think that was on Twitter and, you know, whoever expressed it in 140 characters did a really great job. Cause I took more than that to explain it. But, um, in any case, William, um, most, Successful people like you have a network of fans and followers, either online or in person or both. How have you built your network of fans and followers, and has it been a conscious goal, or did it happen on its own? Ah, yeah. So, uh, you know, here's so, and you, this, I know that you preach this all the time, so, uh, but the, the way, the way I built my followers is by giving value. And um, I ask nothing of anyone. Um, and, and I make sure before I, so, so, you know, I have a, a column in Forbes and uh, I write five pieces a month for them. I, I still do not know how I signed that contract, but that's kind of what I've committed to. And every single article, the question I ask myself at the end is, is this valuable to my target audience? And the same thing with my LinkedIn blogs or my, my videos I put on YouTube or anything that I'm putting out there. I, I ask myself, is this valuable to my target audience? And if it feels like it's a little bit of an ego thing, like I'm putting in, you know, like, ooh, look how I do this or whatever, then I go back and I, and I pull it out. Um, or if I think, boy, you know what, what I'm saying here, and I've done this, I've written some articles and I read it and I'm like, what new, what's been new or exciting or interesting or valuable in here? And the answer is nothing. And I just have to scrap it and move on. And I, I think that if you get in the, in the habit of, just serving your audience, right? What do they need? Um, what do I have that I can offer that would be helpful and valuable to them? How can I, how can I deliver that to them in a way where they can receive it and, and, um, and use it or, or benefit from it? And if you, if you take that approach, then all of a sudden people start to pay attention. And 
before you know it, you start having followers. And, and I think the next step to that is you got to keep the, the conversation going. So if someone is, is good enough to comment on, you know, they took the time to comment on something you wrote then it, it's my responsibility to, to respond to that comment. It's like having a conversation where the other person doesn't talk back to you. So, so I think the way you keep people after you've attracted them with your valuable, generous content is to, um, to, to care, to genuinely care about these people and to interact with them. So if anyone ever likes something or comments or shares something, I I always respond and I, I try to figure out who that person is. I'll click on their LinkedIn profile or whatever um, because, because, you know, that's, that's how relationships are built. Well, there's so many things that I'd love to spend more time talking about. Um, as far as if someone comments on something you wrote, you need to comment back. And I believe that even if they say something negative, you need to at least acknowledge and show that you're grateful for the feedback and look at it as, as something you can learn from. And sometimes people just want to be nasty and pick a fight. And if, if that's the case, then you probably don't want to engage with them in a long discourse online. Maybe you just want to acknowledge their comment and then try to take it offline and uh, either have a phone call or an email. And if you actually try to have a phone call, a lot of those people won't really want to talk to you anyway. So <laughs> there I think I think some people are afraid of engaging in social media because they're afraid of the negativity. But I I believe that you need to just put yourself out there and you will attract people into your network who who belong there, who who are attracted to your personal brand. Yeah, you know, I just want to make one quick point about that. You, you said something um, that, that's, that I, I think does prevent people from putting things online, and this is the fear that people aren't going to like them or that they're going to they're going to diss them publicly online, right? And and I think that that's a it's a it's a valid fear. Uh, and the most important thing to know about branding is that often strong brands repel as many people as they attract because they have a point of view and they're willing to say, this is what I believe. You may not agree with me, but, th but this is my uh, perspective, right? So it's not enough to just be an expert on a topic, but you really need to have your own take, your own position on that topic. And as soon as you take a position, there are other people who don't necessarily agree with that position and that's okay. In fact, it's essential because if you, tr if you're trying to not anger anyone, you're pretty bland and you're not going to excite anyone either. <laughs> I agree absolutely. I agree that you should not be bland. <laughs> and <laughs> as I've learned from you, you should be yourself. And I think that that is the mark of a strong brand is that it it attracts the people who b belong in that brand community and it repels those who who probably belong elsewhere. <laughs> well so, said. Yeah. William, in your line of work, what is a resource such as a book, a website, or an app that you have found helpful and why? Ah, well, I, I will tell you my number one favorite place to go uh, to learn anything is YouTube. Um, th there is something on every single topic in the whole world on YouTube. So whenever I want to learn something new or I see a term that I don't know or um, uh, YouTube is the place that I go and their search is incredible. I, obviously they're owned by Google. So you would think their search would be good. And it is. Um, so that's my, my number one uh, place to go. And then this, the second place I love is fast company magazine, the online version. Um, they're always, they, they always take a little spin or a little twist on, on, on things that you can read anywhere else. And it's always a, like just a little bit fast forward. It's just like one step ahead of where other people are. And I love to kind of stay on, on the pulse of certain topics. So um, I, I read them religiously. They send me an email every day and I, I uh, bookmark the articles that I think are valuable. 
Well, we're going to have to share this podcast on Fast Company's social media because we've given them several shout outs. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's spoken like a true PR maven right there, acknowledging the (laughs) PR value of this of of this podcast. You can't deny your karma. (laughs) 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 Sorry, I can't help it. So, William, what is one parting thought you would like to share with the listeners of our audience in uh, PR Maven Nation? Uh, Well, I I would say it is um, uh, be yourself. If if everyone in the world were willing to do it, it's amazing that most of life is is conformity, right? In, In school, you conform and your first job, you conform. Uh, your parents want you to conform to a certain way of being. And so we're almost taught the opposite of personal branding. And if you can shed all of that and just be willing to be yourself, your best self every day, everyone around you is going to appreciate it. And you're going to have a much happier life. I love that. Actually, you know, earlier in the conversation, I referred to the summer camp where I went and the slogan or the tagline that we we repeated out loud every day at this camp was my own self at my very best every day. And so I believe, you know, that from a young age, I learned that. And then when I found you and, and all of the courses that you taught, it just it further reinforced that to, to be your own best self every day. So that's a really great way to to live your life and to be both um, at work and at home because it's really you're you are one person, right? Whether you're at home or at work. Yeah, there's this one. It, it's everyone always is this my work brand or my life brand? No, it's your brand. And and if you if you're that all the time in and out of uh, work, uh, boy, you're, you're not changing hats all day. Right. Um, you're, you're just being, and that's, that's a pretty powerful thing. That is. Thank you. Well, William, this has been just so fantastic. And I, I think I'd like to have you come back again on the PR Maven podcast. Uh, but in the meantime, what are some of the best ways that our listeners can get in touch with you? Uh, well, you know, my, my Forbes column, a lot of people like to follow that because I, I, I talk pretty much exclusively about personal branding or things related to that. Um, or they could just go to williammaruta.com or reachpersonalbranding.com and connect with me that way. Well, I'm so glad that I found you when I did several years ago. And uh, I'm so glad that we had this conversation today. And I look forward to bringing you back again. And I just hope that all of the listeners enjoyed it as much as I did because uh, this has been a really great time. And and I want to thank you for bringing some light into my life in an otherwise difficult time. Wow. Well, well, thank you so much. I'll be back anytime. If you want me next week, I'm on (laughs) because I had such a blast. And (laughs) And and I and I really do I really do look forward to that and um and um I'm excited that you exposed me to your I'm sure amazing audience of fans who who really appreciate your authenticity. <laughs> Thank you, William, and have a great week, PR Maven Nation. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.